Hey there, welcome to my channel. Today we're looking at multimeters. I've got two Fluke 88 multimeters. One functions, the other one does not. There are three common problems that a multimeter might have. I'm going to show you those three problems right now. First stop is this 9 volt battery. We're going to check this 9 volt battery with our known good multimeter and we'll do that by setting it to voltage DC. This battery should have approximately 9 volts. We'll flip around our polarity here. This, this battery has about, uh, I don't know, one quarter of a volt so that's a whole bunch of nothing. We'll check a new battery for reference here. And this battery has 9.62 volts. So we'll pitch that other one, recycle it of course, and then we'll plug in this new 9 volt battery and we'll get on to our next common problem with a multimeter. This one was pretty obvious, our next one's not so obvious. So I've got the multimeter plugged in, we're checking power on this 9 volt battery and as you can see I've got everything hooked up properly and set to voltage DC but no power being measured. So no voltage coming out of that battery. We'll check it with our known good multimeter and you'll see that we've got 9.6 volts. So what's up with that? We'll dig a little deeper and see why this multimeter is not reading any voltage. We've got two test leads. The black test lead lives in the hole that says COM, which is short for common. The red test lead is going to be in the voltage jack because we're measuring voltage. And that's also shared with the ohms and the diode setting as well. Now we'll look at these test leads. We'll do a visual inspection. Sometimes I come across leads that have been caught in a fan or possibly melted um, due to heat, something like that. So we're going to check out our test leads using the resistance setting or the ohm setting. There's a speaker on that setting and essentially what I'm doing here is checking for continuity. If there's a complete path from point A to point B, the speaker will beep. We'll check both leads to make sure that both are working properly. We'll check what we'll call point A and point B. Even though the test lead is an excellent conductor, it should still have a small amount of resistance which is displayed on the multimeter. If it doesn't work, it'll say OL for out of limits, or as I like to say, out of luck. Now you can see that this beeps in some situations, and if I give it the wiggle test, it happens to work. This test lead is no longer good. You can purchase replacement test leads online. In fact, I'll put a link in the description below. I'm going to check a known good test lead on this meter and verify that the voltage setting is working properly as it should. So let's check that out and see if we fixed our problem. Okay, our last problem is when you go to measure current and the multimeter does not register any sort of reading. This multimeter has two fuses inside for when you're measuring current. That's the setting that says A, which is short for amperes, and MA, which is short for milliamps. If you look in the inside here, you'll see the two fuses. And we're going to set our known good multimeter to resistance and check these 
two fuses just like we did the test leads. It is important to note that the power is off on this meter. You never want to check resistance with the power on. I picked up some replacement fuses on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description below in case you happen to have one of these Fluke 88 multimeters. This fuse tests out good, so we'll swap it out and put our multimeter back together. These are the three most common problems that I have all the time with multimeters. If this video was helpful, go ahead and hit subscribe. If you have some other tips or tricks for multimeters, leave them in the comments below.